I'm Ranger Kim from the Last Green Valley, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about letterboxing and also introduce our Last Green Valley letterboxing challenge that we're kicking off at the end of this month. Letterboxing is a form of treasure hunting that includes taking a set of clues that you can get off the internet or other places and looking for a box that includes a, a stamp and a log book. And then you have your own log book, this is mine, and your own personal stamp, just an uh, ink stamp. And you exchange stamps and leave your notes in the log book in the box and take an impression of the stamp that's in the box and put it in your log book. Now this is my log book and I have, this is actually my, I have three or four of these now, but there are all sorts of really pretty stamps. Most of these are hand carved that people have made and it's a lot of fun. It takes you to places that you may never have been before. I have found some of the most interesting places while letterboxing because people tend to plant letterboxes where in places that are special or something that they want to highlight within their area. Now letterboxing got started in the United States around um, 1998, after Smithsonian Magazine wrote about letterboxes that were in Dartmoor, England. One of the areas that was first to take up letterboxing in a really big way were the states of Connecticut and Massachusetts. So there are more letterboxes in these two states than there are anywhere else. Uh, the, there are about um, over 7,000 letterboxes in each state it varies from time to time, but Massachusetts is ranked number one, Connecticut is number two. For those of you on the other side of the state, um, number three happens to be New York. So there's plenty of boxes to go looking for. Now, what do you do to get your, your, your kit together? You need a log book. And I like the um, log books with, with unlined pages. These are artist sketchbooks. You can buy them at um, different artist stores or art supply stores um, or craft stores. You need a personal stamp. Your personal stamp can be store-bought like this one or it can be hand-carved and there are directions on how to carve your own stamp online that you can find. You need an ink pad for your personal stamp. And you also probably need ink pads for many of the boxes you're going to go find. You need to supply your own ink. Another thing you can bring instead of tons of ink pads is um, Crayola or other uh, markers. Broad tipped markers work well too. Especially if you've got stamps that are multiple colors, you really need markers for that. So these are the things you need. And then the final thing you need is a set of clues. Now, if you look on the Last Green Valley website, you can find the clues for the uh, our Last Green Valley challenge. The letterboxing challenge is supposed to have about eight stamps uh, this fall. We're hoping to add more after that. And if you find four of the eight, any four, you can send us your impressions of the stamps and your address and we'll mail you a patch. And that's our letterboxing challenge. Now, the other place you can get clues for boxes because they are all over the place in land, land trusts and state parks, state forests, cemeteries. You can even find letterboxes in libraries and stores too. Some of them are long hikes, some of them are very short ones. And once you find your clues, you can find those on atlasquest.com or letterboxing.org. Go to those sites, find your clues, make sure you read through them because sometimes they'll t tell you things at the end like bring a certain color of ink with you. So, what do I do? I've got my clues here. This is what is called a... Um, drive-by box. My car is just over there and it's a short walk to this one. Some 
letter boxes can be three or four mile hikes. Each one will tell you where, how far it is and, and what the terrain is, how, how difficult it is. The clues can be anything from simple directions to written in codes. Uh, they may be puzzles. I've seen them in foreign languages. They come in all shapes and sizes. There's another thing you may have heard of called geocaching. Geocaching is a, uh, is a cousin to letterboxing that requires that you have a GPS and you're looking for GPS coordinates to find your cache. With letterboxing you don't need a GPS but having a compass is necessary for some boxes. This one's just simple um, directions. So we're going to follow it and see if we can find the box. Okay, it says that from the parking lot, head out the road toward the camp road towards the street and look for the large tree that is across from the building. Okay. I'm at the first large tree, and when I get here, there's two very big large trees here. So what's the next part of the clue say? It says, after the first tree, go 10 steps down the road to the next large tree. Okay. Then it says, look on the right side of the tree near the base. You will find your treasure under a rock trap door. Okay, so if you look in there, there's a rock up against the tree that looks like a little door and I can just push it away and pull the box out. And here's the box. When I open it up, inside is the log book and it's in a plastic bag, which is important. The, the plastic bag protects it from water that may get into this box if we're not careful. and a hand carved stamp. It's hard to see the stamp if you look at it this way, but here's what the stamp will look like when I stamp it. And at the bottom of the clues it said, oh, and bring green ink with you. So I have my green ink. So I take my log book, go to the next open page, yeah. and I don't have Go to the next open page. Ink my stamp. One of the things you should bring with you when you do this is wet wipes for your hands because there's no way to do this without getting very inky. 
at least with some of these bigger stamps like this one. And then I put it in my book like this. And there's my impression. Then I put the ink or the stamp back in its pouch. I take the log book. And my stamp. Ink my stamp. Put it in here. Then I'll take a minute or two to write down my trail name and make some comments about the, the, the trip or the box. And then I'll put it back in its box exactly the way it was. If you find a logbook that's not in a plastic baggie, it's perfectly acceptable to replace the baggie with one that you bring with you. And always make sure you've got it in plastic when you put it back. Then I tend to put the stamp on the bottom, the log book on top of it, close the box back up, and put it back exactly where you found it. And make sure that when you put it back, it can't be seen by someone who isn't letterboxing. Hikers use these same trails in these same places, these parks, and you want to make sure that people who don't know about litter boxing don't find this because if they find it, they may just think that it's trash and throw it away. So make sure you hide your box as well. I put a few extra leaves next to it to sort of camouflage it and make it look like it's been undisturbed. And then I go on to my next box. This is a lot of fun. It's a great way to get your family out into nature. Most hikes are a lot longer than this one, but I didn't want to waste your time watching me hike through the woods. So we did a short one. It, it's it's great to get out. It's a great way to explore nature, but also at the same time get some interesting artwork because all the st our stamps are hand carved by different carvers throughout the last Green Valley. And uh, hopefully you'll be hooked. And please go visit atlasquest.com and letterboxing.org. You can go to those sites and get to all of the boxes in the area and you can have a lot of fun. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of what letterboxing is like and has encouraged you to come out and take our Last Green Valley Letterbox Challenge.